Hey everyone, today we're going through the Herculean task of ranking all of the stands in JoJo's. This is part three, right through to the end of part eight. And I have a very specific criteria for how we're ranking them, because you can rank stands in a lot of different ways. You can go by power, you can go by cool factor, whatever you like. Uh, but today, the factor is if Araki came through my window with a stand arrow and said, I could, I could grant you, my son, any one particular stand, what would be the best stand to get and how would I rank them? So that's our criteria. If I got a stand today, just me, regular dude, everyday life, how good a stand is it? Well, actually a lot of stands are based upon fighting and really that's not really much use to me. I don't really fight a lot of evil villains. Uh, some stands are going to be far more practical in my everyday life and some stands are just gonna be like crazy, I'll box you, I'll beat you to death kind of thing. So it's gonna be a very interesting type of ranking. Uh, some of them, are, are tough and still have a lot of good qualities to them anyway. So Star Platinum, for example, it's gonna be the first one. You know, it's really useful in just a variety of situations. Yes, it can punch hard, but it's also got like crazy vision and you can do like surgery with it and uh, all sorts of stuff, let alone, you know, time stop, which is just, you know, just a generally kind of useful thing to have. Uh, so yes, that's the criteria. We're gonna go through them each one by one. Again, pretty off the cuff stuff, so let's go. Let's crack in. So we've got our tiers here. They go from S right down to the Please No and the Nukes tier. Mainly we're going to be sticking around these tiers up the top here. Uh, the ones down the bottom are for stands that we, it would be more of a detriment to actually have. And then the Nukes tier is for stands that would probably be detrimental to both ourselves and everyone else if we were to get our hands on them. Uh, these are all the stands as well. These are ranked in order. We go from the first stand of part three right through to the final stand of part eight. And with that, let's just get started. Star Platinum. Easy S tier. Uh, Star Platinum is, I think, objectively in the series called the best stand, well, at least up until part six. Uh, it has amazing power, precision, strength. Uh, it can stop time. Um, debatably, it can make you fly, uh, like at the end of part three. And it has amazing eyesight as the other one. And I think that is just a suite of buffs that is just so useful in so many different disciplines. You could be uh, using it to become an amazing doctor with the eyesight and the precision, or a great scientist, or uh, like a great builder who can actually uh, lift his own supplies and, you know, get everything sorted on their own. Um, and just stopping time, just what a good power. You could just use that all the time. Next one is Magician's Red. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the C tier. This is one of those uh, good in a battle, outside of a battle, all you're really using it for is summonable fire. And that is not really something I need in my day-to-day -day life. It could be useful if you're, say, going camping or you get stuck in some Tuscan wilderness somewhere and you need to light a fire to keep yourself alive. But I don't really come across those situations much in my life, I'll be honest. So yeah, Magician's Red, that's gonna sit in the seat here. There are worse stands than it, absolutely, but it doesn't really confer much of a buff. Our next is Hermit Purple, and this will be the first D tier. Um, Hermit Purple has the cheeky whips, and it can do spirit photography as its little, like, niche ability. And both of those aren't really that great. If you want something more combative, uh, there are so many other stands here that will do that for you. Uh, and the spirit photography thing, really, when are you going to use that? You're going to use spirit photography to, uh, like, track down your lost keys would probably be <laughs> the most useful thing I could think of. Because you're not really going to track down any people with it, you just call them. Um, and if you're doing something sketchy trying to track someone down, then there are better stands for that. Uh, so yes, yeah, spirit photography, and plus you've got to smash a camera every time you use it. And that is, that's going to be real rough, like, for just everyday life. You could, actually in hindsight, you could probably use this for, like, um, tracking down people who have gone missing, for example. And that could be, that could be quite a useful thing. So maybe it does belong up a little bit, uh, but for the moment, we're going to leave it down in B tier. Hierophant, Hierophant Green. Uh, this is gonna be another C tier. Uh, it's got, you know, a couple of neat things. It's got the, like, coiling it can do to create, like, a web and figure out where things are happening around you, and, um, it can kind of possess people to move around, which I guess would have some very niche uses in life. Uh, but overall, again, this is just a... It doesn't really confirm much of a buff, so it's gonna be down here in C tier. Uh, Holly's Stand. This is... Is it called Holly's? Is it called Holly's Stand? Yeah, this never gets named. It's Holly's Stand. Okay, Holly's Stand. This is a please no. Uh, the only thing we'd see it do in the series is take Holly out of commission and almost kill her. So yeah, um, who knows what powers it actually has, but yeah, I don't want this. I don't want to die. That sounds awful. All right. Uh, Tower of Grey, the fly. Uh, this is another, oh, this is another C or D. This is going to be a very arbitrary sort of distinction between them, um, but I'm going to put it in the D tier. Uh, this is a controllable fly that can uh, move really fast. This is, this is a very much a combative stand, as I, I imagine a lot of these part three stands are going to be. And combative stands, I just don't really need them in my life. Uh, speaking of combative stands, okay, Silver Chariot. Um, I'm going to say C tier. I think this has more utility than some of the D, in, the D stands here. Uh, but again, this is just another combative stand that is really not much use outside of 
very niche scenarios. Next is Dark Blue Moon, and this is the first uh, sort of underwater fishy stand, and this is probably going to be a D tier. Uh, I'm a very land-based individual, and funnily enough, a lot of the benefits that I would have associated with this stand aren't actually from the stand itself. So the stand can create whirlpools and control water a little bit and make barnacles and such, uh, but it doesn't actually give you any it doesn't give the user any capability under the water, it just kind of controls water. So uh, in the in the series, the, the user is the one who has the incredible lung capacity on his own so he can swim around, and the stand really doesn't help him in that at all. So yeah, another battle stand, it's going to be down here. Uh, strength, a summonable ship that you can control. We're going in the B tier. Uh, this, <laughs> this, has, this has a good use, but it's a very niche use. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, summon a frigate to go and sail the seas, uh, I could. I don't really, <laughs> do I really want to summon a ship that is completely dependent on my willpower to maintain? Uh, that that seems like a very hard scenario, and if something happens to me and there's other people on the ship, then everyone is doomed. So yeah, I'm going to leave that in the B tier. It's, I think it has a, a very strong niche utility, uh, but since that niche utility is quite weak, it's going to end up in B tier. Uh, this is Ebony Devil. This is uh, where Paul Nareff fights that evil like Chucky doll. And this is a D tier. Uh, this is another battle stand. Um, you can go and sick it on someone you hate to kill them. And uh, I think it's powered. It's I think the um, wiki entry says it's like powered by hate. And yeah, that's just, you know, not the way you want to be living. So we're going to leave that down here. Yellow Temperance. Okay, Yellow Temperance gets up into the B tier purely for its shape-shifting ability. So it's got the evil acid powers, but also the fact that it can essentially make you shape-shift. Uh, that's a B tier. That's just, just that's an awesome power. That might actually be even A tier, just for the shapeshifting power alone, because shapeshifting is freaking rad. <laughs> Insert in questionable uh, comments about, um, you know, how we look in ethics, and should we really change our appearance like that? Uh, but yeah, I don't care. That sounds awesome. You could make yourself taller, smaller, uh, thinner, stronger, whatever you like. You can just look, you can just look like your ideal, full stop. Uh, so yeah, that's an A tier, um, just for the shapeshifting alone. Hanged Man is next, and this is just another battle stand. It can attack things in the mirror, and yeah, battle stands. A lot of them are just going to end up in the D tier. I don't really have a lot of enemies that need murdering. Whole Horse, summonable gun. Now, this has a lot more utility than these ones. I think a summonable gun is so much more useful, and it's this, I think, straddles the line between B and C tier for me, because a summonable gun, you would just feel safe all the time. Like, you would never feel threatened by anything, because you have a summonable gun. Um, but I guess by the same logic, you have, you know, a summonable swordsman or a summonable fire chicken so i'm gonna leave it in c tier because yeah it's just uh if you if you're interested in like self-defense most of these stands will do that for you um and yeah emperor doesn't really do much much that these guys aren't anyway uh impress this is a d tier uh <laughs> putting putting a human body inside someone else's so it you know punches them to death uh that's a battle stand that's gonna stay there what's this one called wheel of fortune wheel of fortune is this car and unlike unlike the ship, which seems to be completely manifested by the stand, the car itself is, a, is like a car, and then the, the stand inhabits and overwrites things of the car. So this is a D tier. Um, you can see in the car itself, uh, sorry, in the show, the, the car has fuel in it, and if the car didn't have to be fueled, and you could just drive around with it, no worries, then this would probably be like a, like a B or an A tier, just because, <laughs> just to have reliable transport you never had to fuel up. That would just be freaking amazing. Uh, Justice. This is another battle stand. This is, uh, good for killing large swaths of people, and yeah, I, I don't really want that, no thank you. Um, but it also seems to be well within the user's control, so it doesn't fall down to any of these sort of tiers. Now, lovers could be interesting. So, with lovers, whatever you do to one person, uh, you can make it happen to someone else. And my question would be, is it just pain synchronization? Because if it's just pain synchronization, then this goes down here. But if you could do other things, like uh, that episode of Black Mirror where one person's like, positive experiences can be experienced by another, then it goes up here. Um, but I think that would be a pretty a pretty rough assumption, a pretty bold assumption, um, seeing as really all we see the lovers do is snip things in the brain. So I'm gonna leave this down in D tier, assuming that, you know, it's just a bad time for everyone involved. Uh, the sun, the sun. How would you feel about having a summonable sun on command? This, I think, oh, this is this is a tough one. I would put this up in C tier because there is there is more utility to this. But do I think it's a, actually no? This has to be a B tier, maybe even an A tier, because if you think about it in terms of like battle stands, this is definitely down here. But if you think about it in terms of I could create infinite energy, this is this is gonna be like a S or an A tier. 
Um, if you could make a summonable sun and just have infinite power off solar batteries and the only thing really stopping it was just, you know, making sure you ate enough to keep up the willpower to do it, then this is probably w way up here, way up here. Uh, the more I think about it, the, the better the stand becomes, because there is just so many uses you can use for this. Um, I'm going to leave it in A tier, but I think with uh, the proper support and the proper channels around you, you could easily make this an S tier and do some crazy, amazing things for, you know, people in the world. Uh, so for now, we'll leave it in A, but it probably does deserve to be an S tier. Uh, Death 13. Death 13 is probably going to be another S tier. Um, with, with the sun, the issue was, you know, there is a lot of things that you have to uh, sort of add to it to make it a really good thing. But Death 13, you could just do a lot with because it controls dreams and we only see it doing negative things, but it does have, it seemingly has no restriction of doing a lot of positive things as well. And what it also does is let other people come into the same dream to experience that. And so what you're essentially done is your stand enforces lucid dreaming and it makes everyone else that you want uh, come in and join you in the lucid dream. And that just sounds awesome. You could just do whatever you want, get a bunch of mates together, and then just go on like the craziest journeys of your life because your stand can just uh, manifest everyone into the dream. And that's awesome, yes dear, yes dear. Okay, next is Judgment. And Judgment is the wish granting stand, but it's not exactly fully uh, just getting a wish. What it does is it recreates the idea of your wish out of clay. And so it's a really a horror representation of whatever the wish is made. That being said, this can also essentially make you infinite money because the, the fakes it makes out of clay are genuinely, they look real and they, they feel real as well. Um, but I imagine if you are someone creating large amounts of fake gold, uh, that's not really going to take you too far. So I'm going to put it in the C tier. Uh, I think it has more use than some of the battle stands, but uh, probably not enough to make it up into the, the Bs and A tier. Uh, then we have High Priestess, and High Priestess can morph itself into a lot of different forms. We see it take like a gun, for example, or the giant underwater face. Uh, so this... Hmm... Oh, this is... In in my head, I, I struggle to think immediately of a lot of useful things that uh, having like a, a transformable item become, you know? Um, because I don't know how complex it can get. Like, could you, could High Priestess turn into a phone with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled? And I, I, I have to put restrictions on it and say probably not. I would imagine. Uh, and so if it could, it would go up here. Uh, because I could just turn this into like a VR headset and you know play around with that for a while and then turn it back into uh, like a phone or you know anything like that. Um, but besides those, I don't think it's going to be that useful. So I'm going to leave it in C tier. Uh, Geb, Geb is next. Controllable water. This is a very small amount of water that can be controlled. And uh, simply because it's only that small amount of water, um, I don't really see this being much use. Uh, it's another one of those really good battle stands, but not so good in real life. Um, I'm going to leave it in D tier. Uh, the only thing that would possibly move it up is that you could save people who were drowning by like swooshing the water out of their throat and lungs. Uh, but besides that, yeah, not really that useful. Uh, this one is... Uh, oh, this is the other shape-shifting stand, so this is going to be an A tier. Uh, this, is, this is a great stand. I think any sort of shape-shifting ability is awesome uh, and definitely goes up to the top. Uh, then, hmm, this is Boingo's stand, uh, Thoth, and seeing the future and having this future comic that tells you exactly what's going to happen. Um, honestly, in two minds about this. On one hand, amazing. You can tell the future. Uh, on the other hand, uh, horrible, because it might tell you things that you are unable to stop, and I would, I personally would just feel like a tremendous amount of guilt about those things. Um, but it depends how specific a thing you get, to be honest. Like, could you could you use Thoth to completely manipulate the stock market and make just billions of dollars? Uh, I'm probably gonna put this up in an A tier. I think it's amazing, uh, but there are some, the, the limitations of it are never really truly specified, and it might not really give you what you want to know. It might just give you, oh, this person's coming into town soon, or, you know, things that aren't terribly world-changing on their own. So I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, Anubis is a definitely a please note here, uh, because the stand itself takes over the user. So if I got Anubis, I would just become Anubis, and that kind of blows. Um, the magnet-related stand. Interesting. Actually, I haven't thought about this. Does the magnet stand control electricity as well or is it just magnetism it's just magnetism okay d tier it's a battle stand then we have the de-aging stand and i am probably going to rank this higher than these all these battle stands because i can see a lot of good use out of this uh, imagine going into like an old folks home and just letting everyone in there re-experience some youth for a while i mean uh, the effects are only temporary but just oh actually are they temporary because Oh no, they definitely are. They definitely are temporary. Um, 
And that would just be such a like that's such a, a wholesome use of this. Uh, just being able to let people, you know, just relive their younger days for a while. And that's just that. Yeah, that's a really nice. It's a it's a niche use, uh, but I think it's a really nice one. So definitely a B tier. Uh, then we have Osiris, and this is this is Darby's stand, and this is another D tier. Um, I see no <laughs> no really nice or wholesome use of stealing people's souls. Uh, so we're gonna leave it there. Uh, then we have Horus, which is the pet shop stand, and this is probably gonna be a C tier because uh, it. It can cool things. It's not as strong as one of the other ice powers that is this one that we'll get to later on. Um, but, you know, it still has a, a little bit of niche ice power, so we're going to leave it in C tier. Uh, this one is of oh, the other Darby brother and his power. Ah, so this one has uh, a bit more use than the other one because it also has soul stealing, but it also has soul reading. So you can see uh, the honesty in people. And that is probably actually up in B tier. Um, being able to see people and read their honest intentions that's so useful you would become like the matt murdoch of lawyers you would just become like uh so good at lawyering and just telling uh you know figuring out schemes and seeing if people were lying to you or not you would never get swindled uh this is yeah that's a really strong tier uh this is the uh the weak magician this is the um illusionist stand and this one i'm also tempted to be putting up in b tier uh because there is a lot of fun things you could do with illusions um you would become the best magician of all time with this stand and I think it, it has a lot more utility than just some of these battle stands. Um, in everyday life, you could essentially design your room however you wanted all the time and change it around on a whim. Um, yeah, it just, it, uh, the illusions themselves are fake, but people uh, experience them as if they were real. And so I think that's, yeah, that's amazing. Um, a dangerous level might even put it higher, but I think B tier is a good spot for it at the moment. And this next one is a bit of a surprise. Uh, this is Vanilla Ice's stand. And honestly, I would put this up in it's either an S or an A tier, because I think having the ability to create a hole in the universe solves <laughs> solves a lot of problems. You could you would make so much money by going into random cities and being like, hey, um, I will get rid of every single link. If, you, if I go to your dumps, I can get rid of all of this trash in like two seconds. Uh, all I have to do is just create a hole in the universe here. Just don't let anyone near me, otherwise I'll kill them. Um, but besides that, you know, you would just solve a lot of problems and uh, like nuclear waste as well. Uh, you could just make a nuclear power becomes not an issue because now we have a place to get rid of the nuclear waste. We can just throw it into the stand and then, you know, you sort it. You absolutely sort it. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's really useful and has a, a, a good, strong capability outside of um, just yourself. Uh, um, yeah, this is an STS stand. It's, it's basically Star Platinum. So, yeah, it gets the same reaction. OK, and that is all of the part three stands. Let's break into part four. Crazy Diamond. Crazy Diamond is amazing. Uh, this is probably an S tier stand. Um, it has a lot of the familiarities to like Star Platinum in the world, um, but it also can heal things, and that makes it fantastic. The being able to heal things is just such a fantastically strong ability that, yeah, I'm just going to leave it up in S tier. I think it's fantastic. Uh, this is Aqua Necklace. I think this falls into the same place as Geb does over here. Um, it is just controllable water, and it has much of the hallmarks as the other one. So, yep, it's going to stay down there. The Hand! The Hand, I think, belongs up in probably A tier as well, because uh, it has the same powers as Vanilla Ice's stand, of just being able to delete things from the Earth, and that is just a fantastic little ability. So I'm going to leave it up in here in A tier. Bad Company! Bad Company is a battle stand, um, being able to control like a small toy army. There is not a lot of use for that, I would think, uh, besides battle. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, this is Little Echoes. Look at them go. Um, do we have multiple Echoes, or just the one? Is that a different Echoes? Yes, there's a different Echoes. Uh, echoes as an egg. Please no. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it has no conferable benefit. It is just an egg until it hatches. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it there. Uh, then this I assume this is phase one of Echoes. Uh, phase one of Echoes is real cool. You can slap sounds on things. Oh my mistake. It does also confirm a the the meaning of the message on someone. So when Quichi slaps it on his mother, uh, then she starts to believe him as well. So. This does have a little bit of, uh, like, personal development stuff. You could slap, like, a, um, you know, you are confident on someone and really boost them up. So, it, hmm, if that understanding is correct, I'm going to slap it in B tier. Uh, if it's just you can slap sounds on people, then your D tier sort of sand. Uh, but if you can slap ideas onto people and they unknowingly sort of pick that up, then, yeah, that's a B tier stand. Red Hot Chili Pepper. El electricity is such a useful stand. Uh, but a lot of the abilities of Red Hot Chili Pepper are just attacks only. So, yeah. Uh, in the series, we don't really see it do much beside attacking. So we're going to leave it in the D tier. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Guilty Lock. Um, this, I'm probably going to leave in the Please No tier. Because 
all this does is make guilty people feel worse. And yeah, they're just, it's a real like a mean spirited thing to have. Uh, I think this is the same as Act 1 Echoes. So I'm going to leave uh, this up here with what I assumed Act 1, Act 1 Echoes was. Uh, the next one is Surface and you can essentially just create a clone of someone. There's a lot of a lot of mischief you could get up to with Surface. Let's bring it up. What other abilities does it have? Oh, it does force synchronization as well. So the clone can uh, make someone do something. And if you're a ver this is this is like the definition of a an evil inclined stand. You could do a lot of a lot of bad things with this stand. And I'm trying to think of positive things that you could do with this stand because the, the the copy that gets created doesn't gain any of the the knowledge or powers or anything of the person that it's copying. Um, it, it is just a, a visual copy of them. Uh, so yeah, DTS stand. Yukako's hair stand, you can control your hair. Uh, <laughs> this, oh, this, this might be, this, ah. Uh, being able to control your hair on command could be very interesting. Like if you're a bald person, you probably put this up real high. Um, for me, I'm just gonna leave it in C tier. Like, it has a benefit. You know, you can grow your hair out and can, 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 ugh, kind of keep it however you like. Um, it, is, it, is, it has more personality than just a battle stand or, you know, a kind of evilly inclined stand. So I'm gonna leave it in C tier. Uh, this is the next act of Echoes and Echoes Act 2. Echoes Act 2 is much the same as Echoes Act 1 um, for the purposes of powers. Uh, so we're gonna leave it in the same sort of place. Um, I don't think the new abilities of Echoes Act 2 bring it up to an A tier. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this is this is an A tier stand. Uh, this is the chef's stand. What's this one called? This is ah uh, Pearl Jam. This is the competent Italian chef, and he makes food so good that it heals you of your ailments. And that is an amazing stand. I would love to have that. Uh, that is easy, easy A tier. Uh, invisibility. How useful is invisibility in real life? Uh, again, I think invisibility is one of those powers that is inherently mischievous. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it in the D tier. Um, also, the invisible baby, it's its said in the series, I believe, that she can't control it, and that is why she becomes invisible unintentionally. If it was something that you couldn't control, then this might just drop down to the, the please note here, um, because not being able to control when you go invisible is awful. Um, but assuming that you can, I'm gonna leave it in D here. Um, again, what good ethical things can you do by being invisible? Uh, Heaven's Door, Heaven's Door is an easy S tier. Um, it is quite possibly the best of S tier. Uh, I don't I haven't ranked these yet, but I think I'm gonna put this at the top of S tier uh, because Heaven's Door is ridiculous in how amazing it is. Um, you can learn languages with it. You can control emotions with it. You can restrict yourself on things. Um, you can change almost anything you want about your psychology with Heaven's Door. And you can do that for other people as well. Um, when Koichi goes to uh, Venice in part five, you see that Rohan's just written can speak fluent Italian on his face. And that would, you could learn anything you wanted with Heaven's Door. And that is ridiculous. You would become just the king of the world with Heaven's Door. Uh, so yeah, easy S tier. Um, I honestly, how do I add a tier? I think this actually belongs in an S plus tier because it is that good. Like it is so good. Add a row above. Let's go. This is, uh, I'm gonna put this in the Heaven's Door tier. Uh, because, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's so good. Um, you would solve so many of the problems of your own life and possibly everyone else you know because you can just write out their problems, and that's amazing. Uh, next is... Which one is this? Oh, this is the gun. Um, this is Rat Gun. And, yeah, this is another gun stand. It's going to be down in D tier. Um, not ideal. Uh, Harvest. Harvest. We actually saw a lot of good uses out of Harvest. So I think that it's enough to put it up into B tier. It's not amazing like these ones, um, but it has more benefit than just the casual battle stands. And it's, yeah, I think it fits in here. A lot of things you can do. You could use it to find your keys. Um, I think I've said that before. Um, maybe I'm just the only one who loses their keys a lot. Um, but even like um, how they use it in the series by collecting just a lot of loose change and coins and things around the place, it's, it's just incredibly useful. Um, so yeah, I think B tier is a, a fine place for it. Uh, Killer Queen. Now, do need to check, is, yeah, the second Killer Queen is on this. So I'm going to use this Killer Queen as its own instance because uh, Part 8 Killer Queen is used very differently. And I think Part 8 Killer Queen is a really good stand. But part 4's Killer Queen stand, uh, probably a D tier. Um, it's, it's a very strong battle stand. And besides that, it is just I can control explosions. This is probably something that would be a very risky thing to both learn the restrictions of your powers on and find places for it to be useful. So I'm going to leave it down here with the other battle stands. Cinderella. Cinderella is an odd stand. 
and because we don't really know what the limits of it are. Uh, this is... You really can't do much with this stand besides what we saw in the show, or in the series. And that's, you know, being a cosmetic surgeon and changing someone's appearances around. I'm going to put that in the C tier, because it doesn't change things, it replaces things. And there is a very strict set of, set of conditions that you must follow afterwards in order to keep them permanent. Uh, and so I'm going to leave that in C tier. I think there's a lot of restrictions on the stand, and not enough to really make it a, a fantastic stand. Uh, oh, Act 3 of Echoes. Act... Three, Act 3 can freeze things by increasing the weight, and that is, again, something that I wouldn't really find too much usefulness in real life. So I'm going to leave it in B tier along with the rest of the Echo Stands, but assumedly if it's keeping all the other powers, then I'm going to just leave it here. Uh, <laughs> the, the Photography Dad. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a very weird stand. Uh, you can take photos and live in photos. I think, I think this is a very... A very bizarre stand, and I think I'll just leave it in the D tier. I don't think it confers enough of a benefit to be like a, a good C tier, and nor, nor does it give any sort of strong benefit to be up here. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave this in the D tier. It's this is this is kind of becoming the dump tier of stands that we can't really find a good use for. Uh, they confer a very small benefit in everyday life, uh, or a very very niche ability that wouldn't be used much at all. Okay, Boy to Man is we've only seen it used in the Paper Scissors Rock Boy. And so how it works in the series is that using the stand, uh, if you beat someone in the challenges, then you gain the power of their stand. And in this beautiful hypothetical scenario that we're working with, that Araki has come through my window, uh, through the power of the photograph maybe, and offered me a stand, uh, and only I am the only one with the stand. And this is kind of pretty useless on its own, um, because there is no one else with stands. So in this scenario, I'm going to leave it in the... the there we go. The, the please note here. Um, because there is, there is really no benefit to this. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be left in the- actually, it's not as bad as some of these other ones. You're not lugging around an egg, or making people's lives worse, or making your own life worse. So what? I'm gonna add another tier, and this is the... eh... tier. And you belong in here, because you don't really confer much of a benefit at all. Um, and you know what, we're gonna slap the fly back in there, because <laughs> the fly is such a weird stand. Um, here we go, another shape-shifting stand. It's going up here. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, but the, the weird thing about this stand is that it is very much unclear as to whether or not the stand is tied to whether or not he believes he's an, he is an alien. For that, perhaps, I'm going to put it down a tier because it's not as clean-cut as these other stands. You just get these stands and it's awesome. Um, I think... Oh, but the shape-shifting is much better as well. Um, yeah, I think, I, think it, I think it gets to stay in A tier because it is a better shape-shifting ability than these two stands, but it also, yeah, it's it's the weirdness around the character, I think, because we're never really sure of where the character ends and where the stand begins, um, but I think, just because I think shape-shifting is a really rad stand, a power, and yeah, we're just gonna leave it there, we're gonna leave it there. Uh, Highway Star, oh, this is another battle stand, I'm just gonna leave it here, not really much to say on that one, um, it can chase things around at 60 miles per hour, sweet ants. Stray Cat. Stray Cat, being able to shoot air bullets, I think this is going to be another another battle stand. Um, this is really what d has become, just a series of battle stands that don't really have too much of a use outside of, you know, fighting people. Um, yeah, Superfly. Superfly is a please no. No one wants Superfly. You don't want to be stuck in a transmission tower for the rest of your life. Uh, that is definitely going to stay there. Then we have Enigma. Ah, oh, this is Paper Guy. This is, what an odd stand. Um, the, the inherent usefulness of this, I think this actually has a bit of usefulness, so I'm going to put this up in C tier, um, because you can put things inside pieces of paper, and just for the portability aspect of it, I think it belongs in C tier, tentatively straddling the line between C and B, perhaps, uh, because you're not going to put people in there, or I, I, I mean, you know, personally, I wouldn't put people in there, um, but just being able to, you know, take anything you want, put it in, like, a piece of paper, fold it up, and take it with you. Like, you, if you want to uh, travel to another country, you can just take, like, your entire house and just put it in a piece of paper and fold it up really small, and then you can take everything with you in one shot. Um, or if you... Maybe you could put... You could... Uh, if you wanted to, you could put, like, your entire family inside a piece of paper. Uh, presumably they can still breathe and stuff. Um, and then just take the piece of paper on a plane trip, pay for one ticket, and you just moved everyone across country, like, real easy. Um, so, yeah, I think it's easier. I think it's, it's got some use, uh, much more than these other ones. Uh, okay, this is another please no. Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick is a terrible stand. It just kills you um, if someone sees your back. So, yeah, that's definitely a please no tier.
Okay, now we're getting into the part five stands, and this is where my stands knowledge gets a little bit shaky, uh, but we'll see how we go. Uh, gold experience is... It, it lets things grow. I think the growing ability is really useful. So I'm gonna put this up in probably a B tier. I think it's a, a useful ability. Um, but the the caveat comes with if someone hurts the things you grow, it hurts them back. That's uh, a, it's a pretty big caveat to that power. Um, but I think just the ability to make things grow, um, bestowing life into things is a weird power, but you know, making like trees grow and things like that. Um, yeah, I, think I can see a genuine use for that. So yeah, that's gonna sit up in B, I think. Uh, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is probably a please no uh it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a let's black sabbath is a weird one um i think it it's another battle stand so maybe it belongs in the d tier but just from some of the powers that it has and the fact that it uh you know drags out people's souls um i would i would feel very risky using this uh so maybe it does belong in the air tier uh we only see it used as a remote stand when uh Giorno, um you know takes out the light so we don't really get to see too much of what the stand can do. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it down here in the air tier. Sticky Fingers is such a cool stand, and I think it's primarily a battle stand, but it has one thing which I think takes it at least to a B and tentatively up into an A. And that is because you can open zippers on anything, and what you've essentially done is create a bag of holding. And that's really awesome. And this is, I think, another case of like these two stands where you can just Find a spot for things that we do not have space for and put everything in there. You could take trash, you could take nuclear waste, whatever it is, slap it all inside some zipper somewhere and then it never has to come out. Yeah, I think it's it's so good. Um, just from the bag of holding aspect, I play so much D&D &D that um, I, I just can't not turn down a bag of holding when I see one. So yeah, I think it just belongs up here in A tier. Next is, what is this stand? What the heck is this stand? Uh, yes, it is. This is Soft Machine. This is the one where, uh, it can deflate people essentially. And this, I'm gonna put this in the D tier. This is another battle centric stand, not really too much to it. Uh, Moody Blues, Moody Blues is another one of those very niche ability sort of stands. Um, you can use it to see where people have gone in the past and sort of recreate things from the past. And yeah, it's one of those niche abilities that is useful, uh, but probably not um, useful enough or the niche is, it's not useful enough in its niche, uh, nor is it sort of widely useful enough to get any higher. Uh, same with Sex Pistols, probably. Yeah, actually, no, it's probably gonna belong in D tier. Uh, it's more of a battle-centric stand. Um, you've got six little boys who can run around on your gun and shoot bullets a certain way. Uh, not really too much to that besides, you know, shooting people. So, yeah, I don't really shoot a lot of people in my everyday life. They can sit in D tier. Then we've got Craftwork. Craftwork, again, not too much of a benefit. It can stop things from moving. Cool, D tier. Little Feet! Little Feet is... Little Feet has a weird ability of making things shrink, and there could be a lot of use for this. Um, you could use it in a lot of like surgical contexts, for example, um, like doctors and shrinking uh, sort of the, the bad things inside our body. From the way stands work, and I would say kind of with the technology we've got at the moment, probably not a very useful stand. Um, so I think if you could slap like a little GoPro to your stand and like send it into someone's body to like uh, remove like tumors and stuff, probably a really useful and great stand. Uh, but for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it in D tier. Um, not that great. Aerosmith, summonable plane. The only way we've seen Aerosmith used is as an attack plane. And if you could summon it bigger and ride in it, I think this would be a sweet air stand. This would be uh, much like our friend uh, Strength over here with the summonable ship. I think this would be freaking awesome um, because this one doesn't need fuel like the car. Uh, so it would be amazing. Um, but in the series, we do never see it summoned that big. So I'm assuming that you cannot, uh, leaving it as just a another stereotypical battle stand, which we're gonna leave in detail. Uh, then the man in the mirror, we have already come across these man in the mirror stands before. They are pretty average. They just really good for battles and not much else. So he's going to sit there. Okay, next is Purple Haze from that same fight. And Purple Haze is probably going to be our first nuke tier stand. Uh, if, if you summon the stand, it creates one of the most virulent diseases ever. Uh, so we're going to leave that down in the nuke tier. Uh, I don't particularly want to do that. Um, then we have... Oh, what's the stand actually called? Uh, it's called Mr. President, um, a summonable room. And I think much like, uh, you know, bag of holding earlier, um, I would probably put this up in A tier because this is uh, basically Lehman's tiny hut. Uh, sorry for all the D&D references, but this is really what they are. And uh, much like, you know, a bag of holding, I can't turn down Lehman's tiny hut. It's so useful. Think of the rent money you would save if you could just jump into a, like a little turtle. That's amazing. It's also a bit unclear as to 
if someone got this stand, right, would they become what people jump into or do they like get something that becomes the thing they can jump into? Uh, like, would, would I just be given this key that people could jump into and then that could be like the portable room? Um, but I think that's freaking awesome. I think that's amazing stand. So yeah, A tier for that. Uh, then we've got the, the, the Beach Boy, Strong Fisherman. That's a D tier stand. Um, when on earth are you going to use a fishing hook stand? Um, IRL? Never, I would say. Uh, much like suck the suck the hotness and make people old. That was that was horribly phrased. <laughs> um, the Grateful Dead is another battle stand and just one. Yeah, unless you're in a battle, why would you want this? Uh, this honestly, this tends towards a more Nuki style tier, so I'm gonna just leave it in the air eh tier uh, because I, I, yeah, if it if it was slightly more evil, it would go in the Nuki tier, but I think it's it literally can sit there for the moment. Uh, then we have Babyface, and I I am personally very uncomfortable with how Babyface uh, is, you know, created in the world. Um, so I would put this in the please no tier, uh, because um, just just the fact of having to... The, the way in which you summon Babyface the stand uh, is rather uncomfortable, uh, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, then we have, okay, White Album. White Album is just a better ice stand than Pet Shop. Um, and I think there's a lot you could do with this. Um, oh, it's it's an A or a B tier, uh, because there is a lot you could do with just being able to cool things down. And I think much like the sun earlier, this this, this has got to sit in the same tier as the sun. Um, it's just the opposite. This makes things really hot, this makes things really cold. And there is a lot of use you can do for that. Um, th if you went into like any equatorial city and was like, hey, I can, I can completely cool down like your city for you if you would like. And you would just, you'd be an absolute hero. So yeah, that's gonna be an A tier. Easy A tier. Uh, <laughs> okay, the big boys. All right, um, here we go. King Crimson. King Crimson is a weird ability. I think there are, later on we'll find in part seven, a better time-related stand. And this isn't quite as good, I would say, as stopping, oh, is it? Is it as good as stopping time? In my head, I say no. Actually, no, I, it must surely sit with the same power is stopping time because you can interact in that time while other people experience their own time um but to be completely honest um the world and star platinum set up here for reasons other than time stopping powers so i'm gonna put it in the b tier it has a stronger ability than the ones in c it's it's weird in what situation would you need to be able to skip time ahead uh your your version of things over overwrite what other people do uh there is a very niche like a very small amount of scenarios i can actually picture that being useful um but i think in saying that it is still a time stop ability uh and i think that for itself puts it up in b tier and then we have the the shark boy uh this is another battle stand it's really no use to anyone just actually hmm hmm nah it's gonna be a d tier stand i think this would be this is a very low d tier stand uh because you need a body of water in which to summon it um next one is making people lie on command uh, this is this is gonna sit with the rest of them in D tier. Um, not so much a battle stand. I would more put it with, uh, say, surface, which is a inherently m mischievous stand. Uh, there's not a lot of like kind ethical things you can do with the stand by forcing someone to lie. Uh, so yeah, we'll park him there. Uh, oh, here we go. This is this is definitely a please note here. This notorious Big. Uh, it does nothing until you die, and then it kills the people who killed you. That's just an incredibly vengeance related stand so we're gonna we're gonna park it there and never use it next is spice girl and honestly i i struggle to remember what uh, she does uh it softens things that are hit this really is another oh is does it have more use than a battle stand? i think it has more use than some of the battle stands uh softening things does have a certain use yeah, I think I think it contains a bit more use than some of these other stands. Um, although to be fair, we did put Killer Queen down here. Yeah, since we put Killer Queen down here, I'm gonna leave it in the same spot. Um, uh, no, it's gonna go up here. It's, it's going up and see. We put Killer Queen down here because you know it was just inherently dangerous, and uh, Spice Girl has seemingly more control to it. So yeah, it can it can stay up here. It can stay up here. Uh, Metallica. Being able to control metal is super useful. You just become Magneto. Um, I think this is probably a C tier. It's just a better version of these stands. Um, we only get to see it in a very aggressive context. 
Uh, if we saw it in the series sort of moving things to the scale that we see Magneto do, uh, then this becomes a, a B tier and an A tier potentially, uh, because you would just become one of the best builders of all time. Um, but just from what we have seen it do, I'm going to leave it in C tier. Uh, this is one of those niche stands on this list that, uh, <laughs> like this one, uh, they have very specific moments in the manga that are referenced for like two pages. So we're going to leave it down here. It's ones we're not going to cover. Uh, the next one then becomes Green Day. And this is another one that uh, is, is very close to a nuke tier stand. I think, yeah, I would put this in a nuke tier stand. This is something that just, it, you have a certain control of it. Um, actually, this is probably a please no. Ah, uh, is it? Who? <sighs> yeah, this is going to be a please no. So I'm going to reserve nukes for ones that if, if I accidentally trigger, we're screwed. Um, and the please knows, uh, if I accidentally trigger it, I can still turn it off. Uh, and this one I can turn off. Uh, but as opposed to uh, Purple Haze, which, you know, once it started, you're, you're screwed. Um, swimming through land. Uh, this is the sea. It's <laughs> it has a utility. Um, there is a use for it. You know, uh, you could swim to work in the morning, uh, which gives it some more power than just some of these more battle related stands. There is more to it than just punching someone hard um, or just injuring people. Uh, so, yeah, it can set up and see. Uh, this must be Silver Chariot Requiem, and this is a nuke stand. Um, if this gets triggered, uh, people just start dying, so I, I don't want this. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, Gold Experience Requiem. This is, like, king of the battle stands, and honestly, I'm just going to set it up in the same tier as Gold Experience. Gold Experience Requiem, to my understanding, the only thing it adds is being able to punch people into their own reality where they die infinitely. Um, and personally, I just find that a very cruel punishment. Um, so I'm not really judging it on that. I'm judging it on the fact that it has all of the gold experience powers um, and all of the extra powers that it gets it doesn't really elevate it up into an A tier. So it can sit in the B tier with everything else. And I think is that all of the part five stands? Oh, no, this is the last one. Here we go. Here we go. This is the last one. This is from the uh, epilogue of um, Vento Oreo. This is a really weird stand in that it it points out someone who's close to dying and then just starts following them around. Um, and I don't think this has a user, or if it does, it's an automatic stand. So I'm just going to say this in the please no tier. Um, if it's an automatic stand and it's out of your control and it doesn't really do much to help you, yeah, it can just sit in the please no tier. Uh, so this is our ranking so far as at the end of part five. And you can see we've got a, we've got a pretty standard theme going. Heaven's Door is definitely in its own tier. Um, ST stands are just, you know, they have some really strong abilities, uh, just generally buffs to your life. Um, our AT stands have very strong powers that are mainly used for very specific reasons. Um, they're not really personal buffs so much as they are um, things you can do to help society in general or, you know, very specific D&D references that I just cannot turn down. Um, our BT stands have some very niche abilities that I think are rather strong, um, as well as, you know, gold experience, just quite strong stands here and here. Um, our C tier stands are mainly just the ones that are slightly better than the battle stands. They have something um, specific to them that makes them slightly better. Uh, and then we have just the, the dumping pool of the D tier stands, uh, which would really confer no useful benefit, I think, in everyday life. Um, some of them more than others. I think most of these would be debatable as to whether or not how highly you put them and um, how creative you could get with them. And I think that's the, that's the deal with most of the stands. Is how creative can you get with them and what ideas could you use to... Uh, you know, make the most out of them. Uh, but for me, they're going to sit in D tier. Uh, uh, eh, tier, these are just very average stands. Um, I don't think any of these would kind of change my life in any sort of way. Um, and please note here is higher than I thought. I didn't actually think there were this many stands that I would actively not want so far. And this is only three parts deep. But I am surprised that there are this many stands in here. Um, and then two nukes. Two nukes that, um, if you got, this would just suck to have. Uh, anyways, let's crack on into part six now. Stone Ocean, let's go. First up, we've got Stone Free, and I think Stone Free falls into this C tier category. Uh, it's better than a lot of the, just the general battle stands, but what it can do is I don't really think enough to elevate it up into like a B or an A tier. It's got some cool abilities, but at the end of the day, what are you really going to use it for besides a battle stand? Uh, then we've got Goo Goo Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls is, well, let's be real. It's the same as this stand. Uh, it shrinks you down. Um, and yeah, we're, we're realistically you going to use it in real life. Uh, then we've got Manhattan Transfer, and this is the satellite thing that um, uh, John Galley shoots his bullets through. And apart from that, all it can really do is weed 
read. All it can do is really read. Uh, all it can do is really read directions of wind currents and such. Um, and personally, I wouldn't really find a lot of utility for that in real life. So I'm just going to slap it with these other D tiers. Um, actually, it's probably in the A eh tier because at least these ones confer some sort of benefit in the form of defense. And then, eh, when are you really going to use this? Uh, White Snake. White Snake. White Snake is a weird ability. Um, there is a lot of very uh, tough questions to be raised with White Snake's ability of punching people's consciousness and memories out of them and being able to put them in someone else and how that would work. Um, and honestly, I think just for those questions alone, it's going to go in the C tier because it could be horrible and horrifying and really like some unethical stuff, or it could be, um, which would put it down here rather. <laughs> um, but if it was, if you could do like a lot of cool things with it, like um, hitting out someone's memories, giving them to someone else, and then um, like they blend together and then you can take on all of someone else's memories and all of your own. Uh, I think that'd be really interesting um, and raise, yeah, just raises a lot of questions, this power. So we're going to leave it and see. Um, I really don't think I have a strong enough grasp on what you could do with White Snake to put it either higher or lower. Uh, then we've got, this is Highway to Hell. This is the, uh, if if something bad happens to me, you're going to feel it as well. And I think this belongs in the please no tier. Um, or potentially the eh tier, purely for the fact of uh, making, just like yeah, as a self, self-defense, self as a deterrent. Um, but I'm going to check it in the please no tier. Um, I feel like this wouldn't be something that I would like. Um, if I slip over and hurt myself, then someone else is going to get hurt too. And, you know, that's kind of awful. Um, this one is burning down the house, and this is Emporio stand. And it's really unclear as to whether or not this stand only applies in the prison or not. Because if it's just the prison, then this is a please no. I don't want a stand that only works in a fictional universe. Um, or actually, this would be an absolute eh. Um, but if this lets you interact with ghost objects and ghost rooms all over the place, uh, then this belongs somewhere. Because I have no idea, we have no way of knowing just how many things this could possibly interact with. Uh, and for that, I'm going to leave it in the D tier because we really don't know. We don't know the extent of it. I think it would be... Now I'm convincing myself to move it up to C tier. Because uh, you see Emporio like eating chocolate and stuff, and he still tastes it. He just gets none of the nutrition out of it. And that's an interesting idea. There is, there is things you could do with this, I think, if it worked outside of the prison. So that's my assumption. If it works on all ghost things globally, then it's up here. Otherwise, you yeah, definite eh tier that you can't actually use it. Uh, this is Ermi's stand. This is Kiss. Uh, I think you could find a lot of utility out of Kiss. You can duplicate things again and again, and you could get one item and duplicate it across like an entire population of people, and that would be so amazing. Uh, the downside of that comes with the minute the stick is removed, everything comes together and uh, essentially blows up as they smash into each other. And that's a pretty big downside. Uh, and for that alone, I think it belongs down in C. The ability to duplicate things is amazing. And that is potentially like a world changing stand that be would belong up here. But for the fact that as soon as the stickers are removed, which we can assume if something happens to the user, then the stickers will get removed then everything comes together and everything is destroyed. Uh, which could be, you know, pretty devastating depending on what you've duplicated. So I'm going to chuck it in C because of that inherent limitation to the power. Next is Foo Fighters, and Foo Fighters is a weird one because you have to divorce the stand from the plankton. And we've never seen the stand divorced from the plankton before, so we don't actually know what it does on its own. Uh, it's got some cool abilities like, uh, you know, being able to heal itself and uh, um, being able to manipulate water and those are really cool, which would make it a, quite a good stand, to be honest. Um, but it's it's unclear as to how much of that just comes down to it being a plankton colony. For the inherent big question mark over the stand, I'm going to set it in D tier. I'd probably have some really cool abilities to move it up, but yeah, I just don't know enough to accurately put it anywhere. Uh, next is Weather Report, and this is a nuke tier stand. Uh, Weather Report is one of those stands that should be up in S tier or near Heaven's Door level of fantastic. Uh, being able to control the weather globally, even to the fact that you can control the ozone layer, is amazing. That is just a world-changing stand. Fantastic. But it's the it's the abilities that come from after Weather Report gets his memories awakened. And I think there's a specific line from Poochie somewhere where he says that whole part where the ozone layer starts cracking and people start turning into snails. Poochie says that that is an unconscious part of the stand that just happens. 
So it's not something that weather report turns on, it's just, hey, I have this stand, and all of a sudden people are turning into snails because I just have this stand. And that's horrifying. Uh, so if someone got this stand, it's probably just a real bad time for everyone involved. So yeah, it's gonna go down here in the nuke tier. This one is Jumping Jack Flash. And this is the anti-gravity guy. And that is, that's a real interesting ability. Uh, I, I think it, I think it's a C tier. Uh, it's not an interesting enough buff to put it up in the Beasley A tier, uh, but it's definitely a buff as opposed to just a lot of the battle stands. So I think, I think C tier is fine for that. Um, it's also got some interesting ideas with like the centrifugal force that it can use and apply to things. Uh, but for my everyday life, yeah, I think C is quite comfortably where it belongs. So next is Limp Biscuit, and this is the Invisible Zombies stand. <laughs> this this is an eh tier. This is one I would never activate um, because you are one, creating zombies, two, the zombies are invisible, and three, they just immediately attack your enemies. And I don't really have a lot of enemies that I want, you know, mauled to death by invisible zombies. Uh, so this is, I don't think, a stand I would ever use. So it's going to definitely belong in the eh tier. Okay, Diver Down is next, and Diver Down is a it's another one of those weird stands of how much power could you get out of this because this is kind of ridiculous so diver down can store things inside of something so it can like punch a wall and then wait for that and then the wall will punch you later on uh, but can also move through things and restructure what it moves through and that is a ridiculous ability um i think honestly up to an a tier stand um, we see it at the end of the Yoma fight where he's uh, attaching the brain of a frog into yo yo Ma and just making, you know, very intricate things like that to happen. And that's 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 crazy. That is honestly ridiculous. Um, this has, I think, the possibility to go up to an S tier as well. But it is just for what are the limitations of it once again? What can you actually do with this? Could I, like, put my hand through a drink bottle and turn the inside from water into something else? Or could I get like a like a handful of electronics and then put my hand through it and magically turn that into some sort of very high-tech technology? If I could do something like that, that's ridiculous and S tier easy. Uh, but again, I don't know how much of that knowledge needs to come from. Actually, no. In to be fair, in in the fight with Yoma, if he's replacing the frog brain into Yo Yo Ma, that has to have an idea of hey, I can manipulate. One, a stand, two, this other stand, and three, I can wire a frog's brain into the stand. Uh, so that has to be S tier. That's, that's so crazy if just the stand itself confers you the knowledge to be able to do that. So yeah, S tier. Leave it there. Okay, this is another nuke tier stand. Uh, this boy, this little boy right here is Survivor, and this is a nuke tier stand because this is another automatic stand. Um, this is the one that triggers the uh, battle royale on the base of the prison by making people want to fight. Uh, and again, this is an automatic stand. This just happens automatically. Uh, that's awful. I don't, I don't want that in my life. So that's going to be left down here. Likewise with uh, this one, I don't think it's a nuke tier stand, but it's going to be in the please no tier. Uh, this is Planet Waves. This is the guy that summons asteroids to your location. Uh, and that's awful. I mean, to the, to the stand's defense, it stops them before it hits you. So there's that. But anything around you can get absolutely destroyed by the meteorites coming into surface around you. And that's kind of awful. So that's definitely a please no. Uh, this is Dragon's Dream. This is the Feng Shui Fighters uh, stand. We're going to say it was an A tier. This is a great stand. I, it's, it's curious as to whether or not this stand like confers the Feng Shui knowledge to you or if you have to have that knowledge already. This is essentially, to my understanding, a for, for my own life, this would be like a dumbed down version of where is he? Where is your boy? Here he is. Hey, yeah. Um, because this confers luck and it tells you where the lucky spots are, where like neutral places are. That is just a great ability. Anything to do with luck, that's that's a that's an amazing stand. Um, I think the only reason it is in A tier as opposed to S tier is because uh, it's unclear as to how much of that knowledge you need to know as an individual and how much is the stand conferring that knowledge to you. So, but still really strong. So up in A tier, easy. Uh, this is Yoma. There we go. This is the uh, the guy with the acid spit, uh, and this is. Probably just a D tier stand. This is another battley stand that you would just never use. Um, tentatively, almost in the A tier because it's it's just it's that bad. Of, I, I'm not gonna sick this on someone. That's that's awful. That's horrifying. <laughs> Next is Green Green Grass of Home. This is a please no. This is the Green Baby stand. Uh, so when you move closer to it, uh, for every half that you get closer to the baby, it shrinks you down half in size. That's that's horrible. Um, I know this is another case of like the invisible baby, which was uh, somewhere. Um, where's Invisible Baby gone? Here he is, little Invisible Baby, there she is. 
this is much like the Invisible Baby, and we don't know if it's completely an automatic stand or if it is uh, something that you can turn off and on. But regardless, this is kind of awful. Uh, you would never be able to be approached by anyone, and that's kind of horrible. Uh, this next one is something that we're going to move to the bottom again as well. This is uh, one of those very brief powers that shows up when um, Poochie is fighting FF, um, but really not enough to be able to talk about it. Next we have Jailhouse Lock from that just a brilliant fight. Um, and I think this is a... Oh, this is this is a this is a D tier stand. Um, this is one of those stands that I would never want to use, which almost puts it down a tier. But yeah, this is one of those self-defensey sort of stands. Uh, in what scenario would you want to enforce someone to only remember three things? Uh, that's just uh, very cruel, I think. So it's going to be left here in the D tier. Uh, this is Bohemian Rhapsody. This is another nuke tier. This is at the end of Stone Ocean when all of the fairy tales globally start coming to life, and that's horrifying. That's a nuke. If you if this sits off. Like, so many people globe. This is this is one of the very few stands that have a global impact from the second it is activated. And that's horrible. That's that's an easy nuke tier stand. No one would want that. Uh, then we have... Oh, this is the Flying Rod guy. It's a bit of a weird photo for him, actually, but this is the Flying Rod guy. I'm going to move this into the C tier. Uh, so it is very uh, much a battle-centric stand, but I, I'm moving it up into the C tier because what it does is it summons those uh, rod creatures, but it, it makes it very clear in the manga that the rod creatures actually exist uh, in real life. They're just very hard to find and track down. So what we could do with the stand is actually like get some of them and uncover what they are and where they hide and what they do. And you could actually make some like interesting scientific discoveries, I think, off the creatures. So for that, I'm going to put it up into C tier. Uh, it has one very niche thing it can do to help humanity. Uh, and for that, it gets to go up here. Uh, this is Underworld, and Underworld, I think, also sits in this C tier category of very niche use that could be quite helpful. Um, and that would be for um, any sort of scenario where something kind of horrible has happened and you need to understand the history. Um, but also, actually, now I'm thinking about it, you could probably use Underworld to do, like, very old school archaeology. Like, if you go into some sort of uh, excavation site and you need to understand wh what happened here, presumably you could use this to uncover just how deep the history goes. I mean, we only see it used for rather recent history with um, like, a, like a football team and a, a plane crash. I wonder what the limitations are around this. And I think you could do a lot with the stand. That is more, it has a utility more than just, you know, being able to punch things. So yeah, CT is fine for it. Okay, Sea Moon. Now we're controlling gravity powers. Uh, this... This is a weird stand. Um, oh, does it does it confer more of a benefit? Uh, yes, it does. Um, this is going to be another C tier. Uh, it has more of a benefit than these. Um, and there is a use for being able to manipulate gravity and perspective in that sort of way. So yeah, I'm going to leave it up here. Uh, then we have Maiden Heaven. And okay, Maiden Heaven is a very big question mark because Maiden Heaven, I think, depends on what do you feel about Dio's final plan? Do you think that Maiden Heaven and the ability to lock in someone's fate, so to speak, is a good thing. And that really, I guess, depends on how deterministic you are. And that raises just a very, uh, just, a, just a whole bunch of very uh, deep questions about how you perceive life and what's our free choice and our free will in the world. Uh, for me, um, I think those questions would haunt me forever and I would never activate this. So I'm going to slap it in the air eh tier uh, because I would never activate Maiden Heaven. Uh, it would be something way too spooky for me to even try. Uh, and that closes off the Stone Ocean stands, actually. Let's keep going into Steel Ball Run on. We're starting with your boy. It's your absolute boy. Here he is. I love Hey Ya. Hey Ya is potentially a Heaven's Door tier stand. Heaven's Door is ridiculous, but Hey Ya is also pretty nuts. Uh, hey Ya is, you will just have infinite fortune in whatever you do, and it will just uh, align luck in such a way as to get you what you want. I mean, Poco Loco wins the Steel Ball run. He had no chance of winning the Steel Ball run. Like, there were so many fantastic horse races in that fight, and somehow he won, and won, what was it, several billion in today's terms money. Um, and I think that is purely off the back of this stand. This stand is insane. Yeah, I think this is a Heaven's Door tier stand. Heya is fantastic. It's gonna go up here. Uh, Tomb of the Boom, one, two, three. This is another Magnety, uh, Magneto style stand. Um, and from what we've seen, it doesn't do as much as what Metallica was seen to do. Uh, but it's also sort of up where Mariah was. So I'm going to leave it in the same sort of area down in the D tier. Uh, it's just another Magnety powered stand, but not quite as good as Metallica, I don't think. So 
Uh, plus, in Steel Run, it's split across three people, so I wonder if I would have to get two more people to, like, buddy up with me to actually use this. Uh, regardless, it's going to stay here in D tier. Uh, then, oh, lonesome me, this is Mountain Tim stand. And as much as I love Mountain Tim, um, this is a D tier stand. Uh, it's very much like Hermit Purple in the fact that it has a very specific utility. And that specific utility is one that I would very rarely use in real life. Uh, so it's going to sit here down in D tier. Steel Ball Run has a couple of stands in this list that I'm not quite sure what they refer to. So this one we're going to leave at the bottom as well as this one I'm not too sure on. If you know what those stands are, let me know in the comments because I'm honestly not too sure. One of them might refer to Crazy Horse, but who knows? Uh, next up will be this one, which is Boku no Rhythm. And this is the one that puts bombs on things, and it's, you know, with the pins and you pull the pin and the bomb goes off. And much like a lot of the other explodey sort of stands, um, we're going to leave it down here in D tier. Uh, it's, again, one of those abilities that, you know, it's useful in combat. And then outside of that, when am I going to use it? Uh, another fishing stand. Uh, where is our other fishing stand? I think we left it in here as well, down in the D tier. Uh, because where, when are you going to use this? Unless you're like a very, very zealous fisherman. Uh, this isn't exactly a stand I would use too much. Here it is. Here's the other one. Uh, then Tusk. This is Tusk at one. And again, the criteria is based on things I would actually like be helpful and useful in my real life. And so this might be a bit blasphemous, but Tusk is going down in the D tier. And I think that's going to be all of the Tusks because each of the tusks, Tusk is a very battle-centric stand. Um, being able to shoot bullets out of your fingertips and being able to do it better and then slightly better and then even slightly better again. Uh, all of those are very combative and things that I would generally never use in my real life, uh, especially when you get to like act four when you're shooting bullets at people and they can literally never leave from where you shot them because all of their cells spin towards where you shot them. Uh, yeah, battle-centric stands, Gonna be left down in D, D tier. Uh, scary Monsters. This is Dio's dinosaur stand. And this ends up higher than I think. Uh, no, I think B is a pretty confident place for it. Um, honestly, straddling the line a little bit with A tier. Uh, it's, it's in B tier, not for the fact that it can turn people into dinosaurs, uh, but more for the fact that you gain, you can do like the partial transformations and gain the, the heightened senses of the dinosaur. And that's just, that's really interesting. And there are uses for that to make your own life better if you were to get this stand. Um, I think I would never use the, you know, change everyone into a dinosaur that follows my every command. Uh, but being able to turn like your eyes into dinosaur eyes and being able to like see things really well or like increase your perception of things and you just be able to like experience life in a different way. And I think that's really cool. So for that, it's going to end up in the B tier. Uh, then we have Hot Pants' uh, Cream Starter. And this, this sits up in A tier. Uh, oh, oh uh, it straddles the line. It's going to go in S tier. Um, why is it in S tier? Because it has, well, it was going in A tier, first of all, because it has a lot of the shape-shifting ability, like these other shape-shifting stands. I love those. Uh, but it also includes a bit of the crazy diamond healing factor. Uh, and I think with those two things combined, it becomes something fantastic because it can heal, it can modify like your um like shape-shifting sort of side of things and both of those things put together it would just be a very useful thing to have on you at all times um so yeah what a what a what a great stand uh this is the next one is mandem and i think mandem is an amazing stand uh this is a very top tier stand um i think this is honestly s straddling the line of heaven's door because what mandem does is it lets you rewind time six seconds and that is so damn useful. Um, I think there are so many times that you would just like to rewind six seconds. Uh, like when you um, overexert yourself at the gym and you're like, oh no, that was actually a bit too much. I'm going to injure myself. You know, revert six seconds. Um, oh, I slipped and fell and made an absolute dick of myself. Uh, let's just rewind six seconds. Um, oh, I accidentally paper cut. Oh, rewind six seconds. It's, it's one of those abilities that you would use, I think, a lot more than you might expect just from like small little slip ups and stumbles through the day and you would just no longer experience them because you would just be like nah i don't want to go back six seconds nothing happened we're good let's move on um you see something real stupid in like a discussion not nah, six seconds let me try that again um we're good to go no one knows yeah i think it's a freaking uh, phenomenally useful stand for everyday life uh the next is catch the rainbow and catch the rainbow has one thing going for it and that is being able to move fast through the rain uh, and Besides that, it just lets you step on rain. It's It has more utility than I think some of the battle stands do, um, but what it does isn't really that interesting. Um, being able to stand on rain doesn't really confer much of a benefit, so yeah, it's going to just sit in D tier. Uh, then we have 
in a silent way, and this is Sandman's power. And this is uh, much similar to Quichi Stand, apart from I don't think um, this one confers the psychological aspect of them. So with Quichi Stand, it went up into B tier because it could slap ideas onto someone, whereas Sandman's I don't believe can. Okay, so there's a little bit more to it. So Sandman can also manifest his sounds into objects, and or oh, it's I'm gonna slap it in C. Um, I think it is very almost up towards the B tier. Um, oh, does it belong in B tier? <laughs> I I was wondering if I put it in B tier or C tier, and then I saw Yukako sitting here in C tier, and yes, it belongs in B tier. Oh, this is so much better than Yukako stand. Um, yeah, it can sit up in B tier. Uh, next one. Uh, this is Sugar Mountain. This is a please no. Um, Sugar Mountain is another one of those stands like Anubis, and it's whether or not are you in control of the stand or is the stand in control of you? Because this this stand is the one where if it gives you a lot of money, then you have to go and spend it, and if you don't, then you are trapped in the tree, and that's, that's just awful. So yeah, please no. Um, Tattoo you. This is the 11 dudes who just share a stand and it just lets them uh, basically hang out with each other. Uh, this is the eh tier. Uh, one, I would need to find 10 more people to like bound to this power. Uh, and secondly, it's it's very unclear what benefit it confers, if anything. Uh, so yeah, this just belongs in eh tier. You never use this. Uh, tubular Bells. Tubular Bells is the stand that lets you uh, inflate metal surfaces or metal objects into different creatures and sort of give them their own sentience. Um, and I'm going to put that in the C tier. I think there are things you could do with this uh, to make it really interesting because they you are essentially making like little tiny metallic pets and that you know, has at least something more than a lot of these sort of battle-centric stands. Um, but again, not really enough to put it up anywhere further. Uh, 20th Century Boy. 20th Century Boy is also a C-tier stand. Uh, it has one thing going for it, and that is you would never feel overly at risk. Um, because if you ever felt threatened, you could just lock yourself down and take no damage until the threat had passed. Uh, in saying that, you... Quite often when you're in a dangerous situation, you're not the only one in the dangerous situation. Um, and I, I know I personally would feel real uh, like a bit of a dick if I was sitting there hunkered down like, hey, this person can't touch me. But then all the people around me are like, oh, well, I mean, we're still in this dangerous situation. Thanks so much. Um, so yeah, it's a C tier. It gives you a benefit. Uh, and that is really just peace of mind. Civil War is the next one. And this is another one of these guilt related stands. I'm going to put it in the air tier because air tier is uh, you would need to activate this to really make it work. Whereas the lock from part four, uh, that felt very, almost half automatically happening. Um, whereas Civil War does have a benefit. Um, it You can use it to uh, keep people alive, uh, which is a very niche power that it has. Because when people die under the power of um, Civil War, they can kind of get resurrected and come back. So it has more utility than this. So it's not horribly awful, uh, but it is also preying upon people's guilt to make them feel really bad about themselves. Um, it's, you know, those chapters can get a little bit dark. So, yeah, it's gonna sit in the air tier. I don't think I'd ever use it. Uh, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Oh, how high does this go? <laughs> Dirty Deeds is amazing because one, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap infers on its own the basis that there are infinite Earths and there are there is an infinite number of you across infinite Earths. And how much would you want to meet those people? Um, and personally, I think this is a Heaven's Door tier stand. Um, you could take yourself to an infinite varieties of you in infinite Earths, and you could learn so much about one yourself and about other things. Like if you if you have a particular interest that you really like, you could just travel to that the Earth where you are just the expert in that and be like, hey, I, I got this stand when um, this manga came through my ceiling and bestowed upon me this gift. Um, can I learn this crazy skill you have? And they'd be like, yeah, because, uh, you know, they're you. Um, amazing stand, amazing stand. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to put it up here in Heaven's Door. I think there is just so much use out of this that you will be able to get uh, that it just belongs here. It's kind of a, a world-changing stand. Um, yeah, easy Heaven's Door. Uh, next is uh, Disco Gridman, Chocolate Disco. Um, this is a D-tier stand. It's it's a battle stand. Uh, you would never use this again in real life. It, it's, it straddles the line between these two, um, but you wouldn't just leave it in D-tier. Um, Lucy's stand, Ticket to Ride. Oh, the, the question with Ticket to Ride is... Does it overwrite? Like, do I become like Lucy? Do I do I lose all agency? I think this sits in the please no tier uh, because it seemingly takes over you in order to confer its benefits. Uh, and that just <laughs> it sounds awful. Um, I would like a stand that, you know, you can keep doing things with. Uh, you would love to get one of these sort of stands where your life continues, whereas these ones kind of 
either ruin yours or someone else's life. So yeah, I think Ticket to Ride sits with that as well. Uh, D4C Love Train. This is powered up um, Funny Valentine at the end. And this is a weird stand because I... It depends on how selfish you are. Um, so what this does is any negative effects that happen to you are transferred to somewhere else. And for me, I I would put this in the please note here. I wouldn't want this. Um, but it depends on how like how blessed a life you want. Uh, but the blessing is explicitly at the expense of others. Um, and for that, I'm going to put it in the please note here, just for the caveat that it is. Um, it's essentially like, hey, yeah, like it, the good things will happen to you and you become incredibly lucky. Um, but whereas, hey, yeah, is... You know, these, these things are just going to happen. You're just going to be super lucky. Um, D4C Love Train is all these good things are going to happen to you, but those bad things will explicitly happen to someone else because of you. Uh, and for that, it's going to sit in the please note here. I would just feel incredibly guilty about using that. Um, you know, I'll get a lock on me or I'll die. Then we have Ball Breaker, and this is Gyro Stand, and it's this is this is a strange one to put down because I'm trying to get my words right. The stand was kind of created by his spinning ball reaching its final level. And so the inference is that this stand confers all of the knowledge of the power of spin to the user. And if following that is the case, that's an S tier stand. Uh, because the steel balls in Steel Ball Run are kind of ridiculous. Uh, there is almost nothing they can't do. Uh, A tier. Um, yeah. There is almost nothing they can do. You can see them, like, briefly heal Johnny. Uh, they stick a man to a ceiling. Um, they... You can just use them for, you know, just about anything you want to do. Um, and they, you know, can shoot them and they come back. They explode cactuses. Um, yeah, there almost seems to be no rules for them. Um, and this is this is spinning balls at the highest level. So I think it's really good. Uh, we're going to set it up here. Uh, if it doesn't confer any of the ball knowledge um, and it expects you to know everything first, then this falls down into the, uh, probably the air tier of just things I wouldn't be able to use. But assuming that it does confer you a lot of those benefits, then I'm going to set it up here in the A tier. Uh, another the world and hmm this we don't really get to see what kind of power this the world has uh, but it's assumedly the same as the other one so I'm just gonna set them up beside each other and oh man that's all the stable run stands okay cool Joel Jolian yeah that list is getting pretty full let's go uh, first is soft and wet and soft and wet is fantastic uh, soft and wet I think I'm going to leave it up in B tier. This is almost an A tier stand. I think Soft and Wet is fantastic. Uh, so what it can do is create those little bubbles that go out and then take something from a person, whether it be uh, like when we see someone lose their vision for a brief moment or when someone loses all of the water out of their body. You can just go and take very specific things out of a person that you designate. Uh, and there doesn't really seem to be a limit to what that is. Or well, firstly, you could use it in like a medical context, but secondly, I wonder if you could use it in more of a uh like mental context like could you take people's a certain thought away from someone um but really interesting stand and i think uh you're definitely stronger than a lot of these c tier ones uh but with some abilities that actually might be useful in your everyday life uh like could you just take out uh like if someone had a pain in their shoulder could you just remove the pain from them or remove uh like if someone had like a or someone stabbed them or something could you just remove the knife like that with no worries um but yeah great stand um, I think later on we have, uh, yes, phase two. So if we get phase two, this is uh, post-awakening soft and wet, um, where he has uh, the power up to shoot the full spin balls. And um, that's a very combative ability that honestly I wouldn't use, but we're just going to leave it in the same sort of space. Our uh, next is Paisley Park. Okay, Paisley Park. Paisley Park is, oh, almost a heaven's door tier stand. This is an S tier stand. Um, Paisley Park is amazing. Uh, it is essentially a an amazing hacker that you have on side at all times and it also provides you guidance in situations where you need it uh, so we see like Yasuo is in a situation and then a prompt will come up on her phone like here's two things um what either of them are probably going to help you just make a choice uh and apart from that you can use it to track down things you can use it to find things you can use it to hack into databases that you have no way of getting into otherwise in, in an increasingly technological world Pacey Park is possibly the one of the strongest stands um, I think Pizza Park is freaking amazing. Uh, next is, this is Doggy Style. Uh, fantastic name, of course. Uh, but this is uh, the plant appraiser stand. It lets him sort of cut himself down into ribbons. Yeah, we're gonna just leave it in D tier. Um, one of those weird stands that is really limited by your creativity, I think. And what, what special things could you do with, uh, you know, cutting yourself into ribbons, literally. Uh, next is Fun Fun Fun. And this is... 
uh, the very first stand battle that we come across, which is um, whenever someone makes a cut on you, it creates a mark and then you can control that limb. Um, again, very combative sort of stand. Uh, this is California King Bed. Uh, this is the memory stealing stand. Um, but unique about this is that the memories it steals uh, can be interacted with and experienced. And for that alone, um, I think it comes up to almost a B. Oh, is it B or C tier? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to say C tier, uh, just for the limitations of what we don't know how how good it can be. Uh, because the theory is, if you can take someone's memories away and experience them, you can also let other people uh, look onto those memories and experience them as well. And that would be a great way to like remember things or uh, share experiences or things like that, which, you know, makes it, makes it really interesting. Um, but with that limitation of we wouldn't, we wouldn't really know if that works or not. So for that reason, it's going to sit in C tier rather than somewhere higher. This is Born This Way. This is the motorcycle car that chases you. Uh, it's a battle stand. It's going to go in D tier. This one, I always forget the name of this one because it's got some weird uh, French name, but this is the Slippery Leaves. Uh, Slippery Leaves is an E eh tier stand. Um, I don't think it has a, actually has a user in the series. Again, Slippery Leaves, what are you, what are you really going to use Slippery Leaves for? Uh, not a lot, <laughs> let's be honest. Nut King Call, this is Joshu stand where you can uh, like form nuts and bolts and uh, disassemble things. Um, he uses it to think like rip his arm off and it seems painless because he's just disconnecting it from his body. I'm gonna leave it in D tier. Uh, this is one of those things that I'm sure you could get creative with and find ways to use it, uh, but mainly just a battle stand. So I'm not really gonna use it. Uh, this one is Paper Moon King. Uh, very cute little stand, but again, one of the stands that I'm not really gonna find too much of a use for. Being able to turn things into uh, small origami and oh, it, has a, it has a weird second ability. Um, which is to make people uh, sense a certain thing or like distort reality in a certain way. Um, and the only way we've seen it be used is um, in, a, in a negative context to make people uh, sort of lose track of their surroundings. And because of that, uh, I'm going to leave it in detail. If we could do like more interesting things and make a more, uh, give someone a more favorable interpretation of the world and actually like improve your, your senses, uh, then this would definitely go up higher. But since we've only seen it in a, in a negative capacity, I'm gonna leave it in D tier. Uh, this one is King Nothing, and this is the dad at Higashi Kata's house stand. And this is a D tier. This is just, um, where is it? Moody Blues. This is just like a weaker version of Moody Blues. Um, this stand just doesn't really do anything that Moody Blues couldn't have done. So it's just gonna stay here in D tier. This is I Am A Rock from, <laughs> funnily enough, the panel, I Am A Rock. This, this is just another magnetism stand. It's just, it just attract things to your location. Uh, so it's gonna sit here with the other magnetism stands. Oh, this is, this is Speed King, I see. Um, this stand is uh, Jobin's stand. And there is a very specific scenario if you were like a, a very accomplished scientist and you needed very specific amounts of heat in a very specific location, uh, that this would be quite useful. Um, but me being not someone in that situation, I would find very little use for pinpoint accuracy heat. So yeah, it can also sit in the D tier. Uh, Dubiwa, uh, this is the tornado breaths that chase you around. Yeah, it's, <laughs> what can I say? It's going in D tier. Uh, who really needs to be chased by tornadoes? And who really needs to sick tornadoes onto other people? Uh, Love Love Deluxe is another hairstyle stand, and it, it makes me think of the Yukako stand, and is it as good or is it worse? Uh, Yukako stand controls her hair, whereas Love Love Deluxe controls other people's hair. I, I think because of that, it goes down a tier. Because um, Yukako Stand, you can do things with it, and it is more or less a permanent change because it is attached to you, and you it's always going to be within your range. Whereas Love Love Deluxe, you affect other people's hair, but they need to stay within a range of you for it to you know, stay active. So for that, it's just going to sit in D tier. Uh, this one, oh, this is from the Soccer Boys. These two are the Soccer Boys. Um, so Soccer Boy 1, he can take things in one hand and manifest them out of the other hand. Uh, and... What, what a specific thing to do. Because I don't think it... Let me just double check this. I don't think it copies the item. I think it only uh, takes the item from one hand and uh, moves it into the other, essentially. Uh, yeah, it doesn't copy. Um, and if it copied, it would move up. But since this is just moving essentially one thing from one hand to another hand, yeah, it's going to sit here and... Uh, honestly, it's an eh tier. Like, there are... <laughs> you would get so much more uses out of just these sort of stands in any sort of context than this. It's just moving things from one hand to another. Uh, likewise for his brother, uh, this is a uh, a little poison capsule that can be released um, and 
This is almost an a please note here because why would you, why would you just release an awful poison? Like, what's what's the point? What context would you need to, like, unleash a poison on someone? So yeah, that's gonna sit in air tier. Vitamin C is next, and this is just another flattening stand. So yeah, it's gonna sit, funnily enough, where the other flattening tier stand is, which is here he is up here uh, from part five. Uh, it flattens people and it makes them real liquidy and floopy. What, what purpose would you need for that, eh? Um, then we have Killer Queen, and this is part 8 Killer Queen. Um, and part 8 Killer Queen, I sit above reg his regular Killer Queen, um, but part 8's Killer Queen is better. Uh, why is part 8's Killer Queen better? Because we see it very specifically in a medical context, um, and the sheer heart attack is usable to go and clear like blood clots out of people, and so there is a use for it, and it seems to be much more of a controlled stand, and for that it's going to move up a whole tier. Uh, this one is Walking Heart, and Walking Heart is 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 an eh tier stand. This is uh, Harto's stand, and all we see it do is make her heels on her high heels go long a couple of times, and that's all it does. Uh, that's that's a terrible stand. It's gonna sit here. Um, this one is the Mother's stand. This is Space Trucking, and it's this is another one that I would love to get some more context on to see how much you could do because. In essence, it's going to sit in the A tier because it's another bag of holding. Um, what you can do is hide things between the cards, and it seems like you could fit a lot into those cards. I think um, Sarugi is even squished between the cards at some point. Uh, so you can fit in, like entire people in there. Uh, and for that, I imagine if you wanted to go anywhere, you wanted to take uh, like a road trip or something, and you could just carry everything you ever wanted between your cards. Um, but in saying that, now that I'm thinking about it, um, it does seem less s selective than, say, uh, Sticky Fingers. Uh, so in Sticky Fingers, you can unzip and you have this essentially empty space you can put things in and take things out of. Whereas Space Trucking, it seems more like you can only fit one thing in a time, it seems like. And for that, I'm going to put that down B tier. Uh, next is the Milagro Man, and this is a please no. Um, this, is the, this is the stand that gives you a lot of money, but you can never get rid of it. And you will just keep accumulating wealth until it kills you. Um, and for that, it's just going to sit in the police note here. Um, this this stand is a death sentence. Uh, like, it's a, it's a very kind death, in a sense. Um, but it will still just kill you. Uh, next is Blue Hawaii. And this, this, this straddles the line of a nuke tier, but I'm going to put it in the police note here. Um, this is the stand that if uh, you sick it on someone, it's that transmutable um, stalkering disease that makes people perpetually follow the target. And that's horrifying. Um, they lose all agency and it spreads uh, like an airborne pathogen and infecting anyone it touches. Uh, and so for that, yeah, you would just never activate this. That sounds awful. Um, likewise, for this one, which is Brainstorm, and this is um, the little disease cubes that come out and if they touch someone, then this horrible like, burning effect happens to them. Um, and it's a lot of like creepy diseases in this section. And yeah, please no, I don't want this. This sounds awful. Yeah, and it's it's unclear if these things would hurt the the user as well. Um, we, we see they don't actually. Um, I don't think the guy touches them in the series. Um, but also he's a rock human, so I wonder if it would affect him anyway. Um, regardless, uh, it's it's real nasty, and why would you ever want to activate it? So yeah, it can sit there. Ozone Baby. Ozone Baby is a B tier. This is poor Tom's stand, and this is the where he buries the house underground and pressurizes everything. This is another stand that you just never use, so it's going to sit in the air tier. Um, <laughs> uh, this one is Dr. Wu, and Dr. Wu is going to sit in the D tier. This is the one where he can break down his body into a little, like, um, essentially dust, and then reform it somewhere else. And that is weird as a combative stand, but also weird as a, like, a what niche purpose would this serve sort of stand. Um, and so it's just going to sit in this sort of general dumping ground of D tier. Next is, uh, this is Awakening Three Leaves, and this is a stand that I've always really kind of liked. Um, this is uh, Tsurugi's mother's stand, um, and she can essentially set out vectors and then put vectors on certain objects or things to send them in that in that direction. I think this is a really cool stand. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I I really like this stand, and I, I honestly can't I honestly can't place why I like it so much. Um, but I'm gonna put it up in B. Now B tier stands are real cool. Um, it's gonna sit in. It's gonna sit in C tier. Um, it is. There. I would honestly need to go back and reread some of the chapters with this stand because I, I remember so many things, cool things happening with it. But honestly, nothing specific is coming to mind in order to pu push it up into these higher tiers. Uh, but it is a really cool stand that I, I really like just on gut instinct. 
Uh, finally, uh, these last five are ones that we couldn't figure out what they actually pertain to or the very short ones. Uh, but last one is Wonder of You, and Wonder of You is probably a nuke tier. And why is Wonder of You a nuke tier? Uh, well, it's almost a please no, but I think it's a nuke, uh, because the stand itself is like Anubis, where is he? Over here, like Anubis, in the fact that the stand is sentient and has its own will. Plus, it also enforces a uh, causality of uh, bad things to happen for anyone who follows it. And so it is one, doing bad things for anyone who pursues it, and two, if you're the stand user, it's kind of tethered to you as well. And yeah, it's it, it makes a very weird dynamic. And this is, this is a stand that I would never want to get. Um, yeah, that sounds just awful. For a quick finale, let's use this as Hamon, and let's place where Hamon would be. And honestly, I put Hamon quite highly. I put Hamon in the ATM. Hamon is really good. And I'll tell you why Hamon is really good. Because Hamon, in in part one and two, it's described as it slows down your aging, it makes you generally healthier, it sorts out just a lot of uh, health problems and makes you just generally very strong and very athletic. Yeah, besides just the weird, like, you can shoot pastor at people if you want to do weird, crazy stuff. Um, but just from the health benefits alone and the longevity aspect of it, it just makes your life better being able to control Hamon. And I know uh, parts three and four kind of threw aside the longevity aspect to make Joseph older, but, you know, we see in part two with Lisa Lisa, for example, that Hamon is great at uh, keeping your age down and just essentially uh, making life longer and better for you. So, yeah, ATS stand. I think it's uh, if Hamon was a stand, it would be really good. So here is our tier list at the end of all that. At the top, we've got uh, exactly what you expect. Um, Heaven's Door on top, of course. Uh, hey Ya is freaking amazing. Dirty Deeds done dirt cheap. What an amazing stand. Um, all, all three that I would just be lining up to get. Uh, that is, those, those three are just some really uh, life, possibly world-changing things that would just make your life so much better in so many ways. Uh, they're just phenomenal stands. Uh, S tier stands are things that are really strong on their own and have just so many benefits to your life. I mean, our Star Platinums in the Worlds and even Crazy Diamond, just really strong stands to have at your back. Plus, they just generally make your life better with Time Stop or uh, improved perception or being able to heal other people. The the, the food related stand, I'm gonna forget all these names. Um, the one that lets you, the one that heals people while you cook, that's phenomenal. That's just such an amazing stand. I think anything that uh, has a inherent healing property is phenomenal. Um, being able to lose a dream with other people, that's, man, that's so, that's so exciting. Um, just imagine being able to act out Inception every night because you just can. What an amazing ability. Or being able to, you know, heal people and shapeshift, or being having like a hacker on your side at all times. Being able to rewind six seconds anytime you wanted it, phenomenal. Um, our ATS stands, all very strong stands. Um, things that are either like the sun or, uh, you know, the glacial boy, I'm forgetting the name. Things that could just be really phenomenal for just the country and the world in general. Um, the stands that delete things from existence, or just uh, being able to transform shapeshift and your body or things like that, or external spaces, uh, or my D&D boys over here. I think A stands are quite good. Um, the B stands get very specific in their, their nicheness and usefulness. Echoes is awesome, love Echoes. Ah, that's right, Soul Reading. I was like, why is Darby's stand here, but it's the other Darby. Um, Soul Reading is such an awesome ability. Um, honestly, almost want to put that up into A. It's so good. Um, and then the other ones just generally kind of buffs to your life, things that would be, uh, things you could use more more often than not. And then C tier, these are all just kind of small buffs. Small buffs to your own life. Uh, any that I think should be moved up and down. I think they're more or less reasonably well placed. I think a lot of them have inherently defensive options as well, I think. Uh, I'll always see in D tier stands, they're mainly more the combative stands. Ones that would keep you safe if you ever needed to get into like a fight or something. Um, some of them better than others, but yeah, overall not too bad, I think, on those ones. Uh, Metallica's what a weird stand. That photo is so creepy. Uh, the D tier stands, this really ended up turning out to be like the, the dumping bin of stands that wouldn't really get much use in life, but still conferred some sort of decently defensive benefit to your life. Um, poor Tusk. I'm sorry, Tusk. Our E tier, this was, I think, E ended up a bit arbitrary between the um, D and E tier, but yeah, I think I think I agree with a lot of these, that they're just ones that, stands that you would get, but never activate. Uh, ones that you would just sort of never play around with, potentially like the fly you would play around with, but I don't think I would ever activate Invisible Zombies. Uh, I don't think I would ever activate Made in Heaven, that's just a bit too um, existential for me. And then the please note here, yeah, I'm honestly surprised there are this many stands that I would not, I would actively would not want. Some of these, particularly the last ones, are ones that perhaps do belong in the A tier, but we'll leave them in here for now. Um, and then, of course, the nukes. Ones that you would just not even want. If, if someone 
if if Araki offered me one of these, I would say please no. Um, I would I would pay you to not get one of these stands. Thank you very much, Lee, um, because this this is possibly world devastating if you give me one of these. And that is our tier list. My goodness. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments which stands you would move up higher, which stands you would use lower. Some of the creative ideas you would have with some of these stands. I know that I think creativity is really the limit with these stands. You could do some crazy stuff with some of these stands that I'm honestly not thinking of. Like perhaps Craftwork would do some really interesting things being able to stop the velocity of things. Uh, perhaps that's super useful in a very specific area that I have no, no, like no knowledge about. Or perhaps, you know, you can find better uses for Killer Queen. Uh, besides the very niche medical context um, and, you know, just leaving him in D tier as a combat stand. Uh, and likewise with, like, Stray Cat. Stray Cat surely has some better things to it than I'm thinking of. But, hey, this is just my tier list. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are and any that I might have missed out. And if you know what these are, actually, these two are ones that are very, very short, very brief introductions in, um, I think, part four and part Far, sorry, part six, respectively. Um, these two are from part seven. This is part seven and part eight, I believe. Um, and I have no idea what they refer to. Uh, so if you know what those stands are, then feel free to leave those comments as well. Um, I think one of them, yeah, I think one of them still might be Crazy Horse, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, that's it. That's going to be me for today. Thanks so much for chilling around. Uh, we will, This, I think, is going to end up being the end of JoJo's for now. Um, I've got some... Another series that I'm quite keen to get started on soon, and I hope you all stick around for that. Uh, but anyways, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. This has been CG, and I'll see you G's in the next one.